ready for Christmas and Hanukkah and what everybody else <laughs> is celebrating? That's next week. We're taking it one week at a time. Oh, okay, Bill. <laughs> <laughs> um, when you hear him say that, like independent contractor, do you see a lot of rookies kind of do their own thing or, you know, in that way? Yeah, I think we all are, right, to a certain degree. Um, but we come as a team and we all help each other out. Uh, this place especially helps um, younger guys try to grow. They have a lot of older guys to look up to, um, including myself. I'm now an older guy. Uh, but you have a lot of veteran presence here that do a good job of helping the young guys out as best as possible. I mean, I've been here a, a while. Obviously, I left, but I've also been here now. So I've seen Jacoby grow just from where he started to where he's at now. Like, professional-wise, um, I always made fun of him. Like, you know, you have an opportunity. You need to get your ass in shape, you know, because he was huffing and puffing as a rookie, and he was getting reps with the first team as an undrafted dude. So I'm like, you need to get in shape. And sure enough, like, he's still here, and he's in the best shape he's ever been, and he's looking fabulous, and he's – blocking his ass off he's doing a lot of good things and a lot of people it goes unnoticed with Jacoby but he's doing a really good job being a professional and handle it on the field and off. I noticed this summer it's felt like in training camp you got your man just a lot of passes I know last year in Miami you set a career high in deflections with six so you had 10 this year is it, did something click you know, in that part of your game, or did, did anything change, or what would you attribute to just uh, the success that you're having in sort of like the past defense game, if you will? I don't know. I feel like I've always had a knack for the ball. I mean, since I've been here, I've been, anytime there's been a turnover, I feel like I, I try to hold myself to the standard to either being around the ball when it happens or be the cause of it. Um, that's something I pride myself on, of being a disruptive player, and I think a lot of guys in there do the same thing. We just try to be very disruptive on defense. Um, I've done that ever since I've gotten here, and you know this year has just been a little bit more towards that. Um, I take pride in being good at everything, setting the edge. I, I stole a comment from John Simon. Usually we play on Sunday, so the edge is set on Saturday, <laughs> um, and during while I'm playing in coverage, you know, I just try to make the play if it's in my area. So just things are instinctual this year and guys, everybody's on a string and we're just playing good ball right now. We just got to keep it going. No, no safety looks for you in the future. Say that again? No, no strong safety looks for you. <laughs> you know, I, I did, I played a lot of in coverage in, in college. I had some safety looks dropping in the half. Uh, and quarters, so you know, a tribute to college coaches getting me right for being able to digest a lot of different coverages in the NFL. Gerard said earlier this week that you do a good job of listening to the quarterback. He did, and that kind of helps you. What did he say? He said you do a good, jo a good job of listening to the quarterback. Oh, and that's nice of Mayo. How does that pre snap stuff help you, especially in this uh, from a coverage perspective? Yeah, I, I like to say I'm one of the smartest players in the NFL. You know, like I do a lot of study. I I listen to older guys when they talk to me growing up. You know, as you get older, your athleticism may go down a little bit, but you can make up for it by knowing where to go and knowing what the other team's doing. And it's fun calling out their plays and, you know, there's it goes – back to a play and when we played Detroit uh, against Matty P's team and me and Hightower were, we both said toss. And I think the the camera picked it up. But, you know, that's sick. Like, you know, I'm, like I'm like Tony Romo for a sec, you know? <laughs> but I guess right. <laughs> uh, no, I just mess him. But we just take pride in it. It's, it's not just me as a group. We put in a lot of extra time as a group of watching film and trying to see keys and what figure out what offenses are trying to do to um, go against us. And, you know, you put that work in and it just shows up on Sunday. And when it does, it's just that much better because, you know, the work you put in that week is paying off. You 
mentioned that you know you'd like to listen to older guys for advice. Is there any particular advice that sticks out, or maybe a certain player you played with whose advice you feel like you go back to a lot? Man, there's so many. Um, I mean, I've had a lot of. I had a, a bunch of really good players that were vets that I got to watch. I mean, one, you know, obviously, yeah, here I've had plenty. I've had from Ninko to uh, D-Mac to even High. Like, well, I, one thing I'll tell about High is uh, when I first got here, um, High, I don't, I don't think he liked me too much just because um, – Unfortunately, we traded our guy Jamie, who we're all we're all brothers now, so I'm able to talk about it. So he didn't he didn't like me uh, for a little bit, right? And um, at first, I had to ask him where I would to go on some plays, and I told myself like, I'm not gonna ask. You know, by the time I've been here for a month, I'm not gonna ask him where I need to go on a play because he already has. He had the green dot, you know, he, he gets tired. He don't want to talk to you. <laughs> and I was like, you know what? I got to this to make it his job easier. I got to learn the defense inside and out. So I was here from 6 a.m. to 10 o'clock at night for a month straight. Uh, didn't see my wife. I learned the defense in a month. Um, at that point, I think they gave me the green dot a couple of times, but um, I love High for that story because he pushed me because he knew so much that I wanted to be that person for him that he didn't ever have to worry about what I'm doing. But then it happened so fast to where we're on the same page towards the end of the year and Super Bowls where now I just have to look at him and he knows what I'm thinking. I know what he's thinking, but imagine that. But now I have guys that I've played with now for five years on the team, you know, same thing with Jamie, same thing with Bent, same thing with LG, DMAC, and we're just trying to make that even more, grow that group as fast as possible to where as a unit, all 11, we don't even have to say a word. We know where everybody's going to be at the exact moment, and that's when you're playing good football. And right now we're playing good football. We just got to keep doing that consistently. But it's really fun when you don't have to say anything and you can look at the person next to you and know exactly what's coming and he's going to be there to do his job. Does that help you too when, you know, for whatever reason something goes wrong, but because everyone on the defense understands it from a larger kind of holistic A bigger standpoint. picture, yeah, 100%. You exactly. can kind of cover up whatever they miss. Yeah, 100%. I think if you have the bigger picture, if everybody understands that, but also you have the responsibility to take care of what you need and then if those opportunities come up where – someone's in a different spot you're able to you know make up for it and then pff can give you a good grade <laughs> what have you noticed about Devin McCourty at this stage in his career the way he's playing well what do you think yeah. underrated right yeah. top one of the best safeties to ever play the game right goes unnoticed does his job communicates this is like a pitcher out there calls a perfect game. People don't have people have no idea, right? <laughs> it's kind of it's kind of wild that he's not up with some of the best um, each and every year. He can do it all: cover, man to man, drop half, drop single, come in the box if he has to, tackles really pretty good. Uh, just can do it all, and he's a really good player. And you know, I can say. Good things about a friend every once in a while, right? <laughs> Let's take one more hit. You guys are on a roll today. How has he been as a leader, uh, or how important, I guess, has he been as a leader with so many new pieces coming into the locker room to have kind of that guy that's been here for so long? Yeah, I think he's done unbelievable. Um, obviously, it's no easy task to be the Patriots signal caller slash face of the defense for a long time. Um, you have to have a lot of trust from um, the head man. So that just is kudos to him of how great of a leader he is and uh, a great person he is. Uh, he can talk to anybody. And this is just beyond football, too. He can talk to somebody off the street, and he's going to treat them with respect and 
high regard. That's just who he is. And it doesn't matter, same thing in the building, if you're undrafted or you're first round, he's going to coach his ass off and he's going to try to do whatever it is to help that uh, young man uh, become better. And he does the same thing for me. Uh, he holds me to a high standard and I appreciate it. Uh, it's made me a better football player. It's made me try to reach higher heights because that's the standard he has for himself. I mean, he's still playing at a high level and he always wants to get better. When he doesn't get something right, he's pissed off about it. And it's impressive to see because he's played a lot of ball and just one little thing might be uh, like, that's not that big of a deal, right? But to him, it means the world. And that's why he is what he is. And that's why he's going to be a red coat. And that's he could argue, you guys could argue when he's done that he's a gold coat, but he's for sure a red coat. All right. Thanks, Kyle. See you guys.